Hey, what's going on guys? It's Most Remoto. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about my Moto Vlogging setup. So Moto Vlogging was something that originally I was pretty nervous to try. Um, I didn't really know much about it. I didn't know much about cameras. I didn't know much about video editing. And uh, I also was kind of camera shy. And um, ever since I started, probably I wanna say 10 months ago now, I absolutely love it. Enjoying motorcycles and being able to, uh, you know, show that to you guys and kind of take you along for the ride is something I really have come to love. And um, it's something that I enjoy not only because it's something that, you know, I like to do. I like riding motorcycles and uh, now that I have learned to video edit, I actually enjoy it. Um, but it's also just something that I can help uh, others with. You know, it's a tool that I can teach with. It's a tool that I can uh, bring new motorcyclists into the community with. And overall, it's just a great experience that I've learned to love. So recently, I've been getting a lot of questions in my comment section in regards to the Motovlog setup that I use. And, um, you know, a lot of people say that I have good quality um, as far as the video and audio goes. So thank you so much for that. That's a pretty good compliment because it's not always easy getting the quality, uh, you know, to be that great. And uh, like I said, you know, even though I have learned to kind of video edit and motor vlog a little bit. I am by no means a expert, so this is just what has worked for me. And uh, you know, I wanna share it with you guys. So I guess we'll start off with the cameras that I use. On my helmet, I use a GoPro Hero 8. Um, I originally actually started with my Hero 5, but once I purchased the Hero 8, I have stuck with that on my helmet. And uh, as you can tell, my Hero 5 I still use, and uh, this is on my handlebars. And it's really nice having two GoPros, you know, if you're fortunate enough to be able to uh, spend the money on two GoPros, I highly recommend it. Um, you know, if you're planning on starting to moto vlog, it's really nice for your viewers because it gives you, uh, it gives them two separate angles. So they don't always get bored looking at the same, uh, you know, boring thing over and over. You can kind of switch back and forth. So like I said, Hero 8 on my helmets. My helmet that I use is a Scorpion um, EXO uh, GT920, I believe is the name of it. I will make sure to leave uh, little videos demonstrating all the different things that I have. And so this helmet was not originally uh, intended to be a motor vlogging helmet. It kind of just became that um, because it was the only helmet that I had at the time. So it's actually a modular helmet and I probably wouldn't recommend that for motor vlogging. It really doesn't make too much sense. Um, for me at least, and that's because I ended up JB welding my uh, GoPro mount. And the reason I did that is I tried a bunch of different ways with the 3M tape that's provided by GoPro, and that definitely sticks and it works uh, for the most part, but I wanted something to be, you know, 100% reliable, 100% solid, something that won't move. And I find that JB weld is uh, by far the best way to do that. Obviously, just keep in mind that if you're gonna be JB welding a GoPro mount onto your helmet, you know, you wanna make sure you're fairly serious about using it um, because once it's on there, it's basically impossible to take off without ruining the helmet. So once you uh, mount the mount itself onto the helmet, that's honestly like one of the harder parts. Ooh, this is a nice little horse track over here. That's pretty cool. Take the T-dubs on there. <laughs> um, but so once you get your helmet, your camera, and uh, you get the mount on your helmet itself, then you need to get the little adapters there. Uh, you can either get them from Amazon or GoPro. And they're just like the, the little links that you uh, link together with the little bolts. Sorry, it's getting pretty bumpy here. <laughs> and um, you link them up and you position the camera exactly where you want it. So in my case, I actually only need to use one. Um, it's basically like the mounting one. Um, but originally when I was first like kind of figuring out exactly how I wanted to do it, I had it like on the side and I had it mounted all the way around with a bunch of different links. Um, if I still have that, I'll make sure to throw it in the video so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But it's really up to you on how you want to mount your GoPro. I found that this works the best just because it helps with the uh, vibration. There's not a whole lot to go wrong. There's not a whole lot to loosen up. And uh, you know, it just it's really simple and I like it as simple as possible. And the reason I mounted my camera right here on the chin is I wanted to give you guys the best like point of view uh, that I could possibly give. And I figured that, you know, there's some, some people that like it on the side of the helmet, but I prefer, you know, 
pretty much center with the bike so you guys can really see what it's like to ride the bike. So after the camera is positioned and mounted exactly where you want it, the next thing you're going to need is some sort of a microphone. The microphone that I use is recommended by a lot of moto vloggers. Um, Chase on Two Wheels, for example, had recommended this microphone. And um, I've, I think like a Blockhead recommends it. A bunch of other guys recommend it. But it is the Purple Panda microphone from Amazon. It comes in a little kit. It's one of the cheaper microphones that you can get. And for the price, the audio quality is actually really good. I've messed around and bought a couple of different microphones, but I found that the Purple Panda is honestly by far the best microphone that you can get, especially for the money. I want to say it's like 20 bucks for the entire kit that it comes with. It comes with a little baggie. It comes with a bunch of little the dead cats, which are the furry things that you put on the microphone to help with wind noise. Uh, and it also comes with other adapters and stuff like that. Why is there a big dirt patch in the middle of the road? Huh. All right. So getting the microphone is the easy part, but the hard part is going to be figuring out exactly where you need to mount it in your helmet. Some helmets are a little bit easier than others to mount a microphone. Um, it took me a couple tries to get it exactly where I wanted it. And um, I don't know if you guys remember, but I want to say like a month or two ago, I, uh, I don't know what I did. I must have hit the microphone, but I went out to film one day and the audio quality was absolutely garbage. I had to delete the whole video and redo it. Um, but so from my personal opinion, and this is one thing I really couldn't find off of any other YouTube videos, is when you position your lapel microphone. Um, my, the, the microphone that I have is a directional microphone, so you need to position it horizontal. You don't want it vertical, you want it horizontal. And I have it to the left, right over here. Um, right, it's sticking right out from my cheek pad. And I wanna say it's like an inch or two away from my face. You don't want it super close to your face because you're gonna kinda get like a sharp audio quality and I don't know, it's just not good. Um, you don't want it too far either. You know, you'll pick up more wind noise and stuff like that. Um, but I found like right in between the padding works best for me. I have it sticking out a little bit and I have the dead cat on it as well, the big furry dead cat. An absolutely gorgeous day here in Connecticut. It was a little hot at work today in the uh, construction yard. It was like 93, but it's cooled down quite a bit now. It's about 75 degrees nice Monday ride but so once you have your microphone like I said it's gonna take some time don't get frustrated um, you know it's just something that is finicky and once you get it you'll understand where your microphone will work with your helmet and uh, just remember it you know write it down so if it ever gets knocked out you can always put it back so other than the microphone and the camera um, unfortunately as everyone knows with GoPros especially the newer ones at least uh, you're going to need this really annoying adapter here that I have on the side of my helmet. Don't ask me why. I don't understand why GoPro um, does this, but in order to get audio into the GoPro, you're going to need that adapter. Essentially, in order to hook up a microphone to your GoPro, you will need a adapter. And it has to be the GoPro adapter. It's proprietary. I know it's a load of crap um, and it's like 50 bucks. It's kind of annoying. But once you get it, to be honest, it really isn't that big of a deal. I have this one now for uh, probably three years, ever since I got my GoPro Hero 5. So three or four years now. And um, I haven't had a problem with it. It's lasted me, so it's a one-time purchase. It's a pain in the butt, but it is what it is. The biggest problem is not the purchase or the money, but it is how you mount it on your helmet. Uh, I just mounted it with a little bit of 3M tape. And the reason I didn't do the um, JV weld is just in case it were to fail uh, and I need to replace it, I could easily replace it. If I were to JV weld it onto the micro, or sorry, onto the helmet, uh, you know, I'd basically have to throw out the whole helmet or mount it somewhere else. So, and moving back to the lapel mic for a second, um, the way the GoPro audio works is a little bit confusing and the microphone um, connection that is on your lapel mic from Purple Panda will not plug in directly to this. You will need a little adapter, but don't worry because if you get the Purple Panda microphone, it comes in the little kit and uh, you'll be all set with that. It's pretty crazy in 2021 how many little bits and pieces you need to just get audio from uh, your microphone to your GoPro. I really wish uh, GoPro would change that, but for now, that's kind of what we have to deal with. So that's basically it as far as my helmet goes. That's my setup, you know, Purple Panda microphone, Hero 8 Black. Um, it works great, and I really haven't had any issues with it. 
So as far as this separate um, GoPro goes, if you have a separate GoPro and you want to mount it to your bike, there's so many different ways you can do it. Um, I actually had this Ram mount just lying around in my house. So instead of purchasing something else, I ended up cutting off the little X that was on here that holds your phone because I didn't use it anymore. And um, I just, you know, I'd rather have this than the mounts. I just keep my, my phone in my pocket anyway. Um, so I cut those little adapters off or those little arms or whatever you want to call them. And I 3M taped the GoPro mount directly to that. And uh, it's pretty good. Uh, you know, you guys tell me how it is, but overall for vibrations and um, you know, the bumps, it's, it's pretty good. It handles it pretty well. And this is a bike that vibrates a lot. So if you have a smoother bike, I can't imagine there being any issues with it. Just make sure you get yourself in, you know, the uh, camera line. Uh, what I like about these newer cameras is they have the wide view or the super view. So it's really nice when you're trying to get a view of yourself and part of the bike. It can really get everything. So, and I guess that'll bring me to my settings uh, that I have on these GoPros. I run them both at 2.7K and uh, 60 frames per second. So the GoPro Hero 5 does not support super view. So I have that on wide. And then my GoPro Hero 8 does support super view. So I have that on the super view setting. Hold up, was that a turtle on the side of the road? We're, we're, we're turning around real quick. I think that was a little turtle on the side of the road. <laughs> and if it's trying to cross, I'm gonna help it. Where was it? Oh yeah, it's right here. Look at that. It's a turtle. Hello. Hi, turtle. Ah, I see you. I'm gonna help you. I'm assuming you're trying to get over there. Uh, go in neutral. Okay, you're not getting in neutral, so I'm just gonna show you off. <laughs> okay. All right. Hello. You're just a nice little turtle, aren't you? Hi there. Look at this little guy. Hello. Look at him go. <laughs> I was gonna put him there, but I don't want him to fall off. You're just trying to get a. You're just trying to get a. Yeah. Hi. Say hello to the camera. You're a cute little guy. All right, we gotta let you go. Uh, we'll let you cross over here. I'm assuming this is where you want to go. I don't think you should be in that person's driveway. I know, I know. All right, here you go, buddy. There you go. We'll see you later. Have fun on your adventures. All right, well, that was a little bit of a interesting experience. <laughs> I hope that turtle gets to wherever he's going safely. And we'll see you later, little buddy. So back to what I was saying, um, you know, as far as settings go, play around with them, see what works best for you. Um, some people change the frame rate, oh, not a six gear, keep forgetting. <laughs> um, some people change the, the frame rate uh, to, I wanna say like 30 or 24. It really just depends on what type of video you're going for. I like 60, it seems to work pretty well. Um, I don't know too, too much about it as far as video quality and stuff like that. I do know that YouTube tends to kind of mess with the resolution a little bit. So I try and upload it in the highest resolution possible. Um, and so 2.7K usually looks pretty good once it's uploaded to YouTube. Um, I definitely have problems for whatever reason as far as uploading videos to YouTube. Sometimes they only upload in 1080p and I'm not really sure why that is. I think it's just on YouTube's side, but uh, you know, it is what it is. As long as I can get the videos out in good quality, then that's all that matters. So guys and gals, I hope you enjoyed today's video. That's basically all I've got for you. Motovlogging is something that's a lot of fun. And even if you don't post it to uh, YouTube, it's something that you can just kind of bring back and uh, remember as far as like memories go, you know, a lot of people take pictures and uh, motovlogging is just another way to remember memories and, uh, and you know, kind of look back on what you've done. If you want to get into motor vlogging, I highly recommend it. Um, if you're a beginner rider, I do think you should probably just focus on learning how to ride first because it can kind of be a little distracting at first, um, you know, when you're talking to yourself and especially if you're not sure where you're going or if you're not familiar where you, with where you are. 10 months ago when I first started this YouTube channel, like I said, I had no idea what I was doing. 
I had a GoPro and I brought it to a couple of family vacations and half the time the audio wasn't even working because I didn't even know what I was doing. It's something that you can learn and uh, show your friends the adventures you go on and uh, you know with me in my case I take these videos and I show it to new riders I show it to you know people that like the TW200 or the Ducati that I own and uh, you know hopefully it helps them in making decisions on whether they want to buy a bike or whatever the case may be. All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching and sticking till the end. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, or if you have any suggestions for future videos, make sure to leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching and ride safe.